the Great Barrier Reef's been having a hell of a year. If it was a person, it'd be on life support. And while the coral bleaching was going on, there was plenty of media coverage. The worst ever outbreak of mass coral bleaching. Some disturbing news about the state of the world's largest living ecosystem. The most severe and extensive coral bleaching on record. But recently, things have gone quiet. Has the reef recovered? We're here to find out. Most of the coral that we saw damaged in May is now dead. But what's really disturbing is the ongoing damage. It's going to be a long time before this place recovers. So what we've seen today is that some of the corals in this site have uh, recovered from the bleaching, but others haven't. And the ones that have died have started to become covered in a sort of greeny, browny, sludgy algae. And what we're really worried about is that if bleaching keeps happening due to warming, then there'll be less and less time for our reefs to recover. Fortunately, the reefs south of Cairns have remained largely unscathed from this unprecedented bleaching event. But what happens next time? The Great Barrier Reef is telling us that we must stop burning fossil fuels if we are to have a Great Barrier Reef that our children and grandchildren can enjoy in the future. Well, the value of tourism here on the Great Barrier Reef is about $6 billion and employs up to 65 to 70,000 people. But there is definitely a major concern for its long-term future. You know, this is one of the greatest environmental catastrophes that our country has ever seen. And yet somehow it's fallen off the political agenda. We need to keep the pressure up on our leaders to protect this beautiful ecosystem for the future. And our request to you is simple. Keep talking about the reef. It really is time to start making some noise again. So whether it's around the dinner table, or at work, or when you're talking to your local politician, start talking about the reef. It's too important to stay silent.